Hi, everybody. It is still May 6, 2019. I'm going to be going through articles, videos. I will link below to everything. It's very hard to find out what is happening in this country regarding our weather. So please, I appreciate everybody who leaves links to uh, information regarding your area and what is taking place. It's hard to find the information, but there's a lot going on just within the last 24 hours. So I just want to point out that on this um, hourly data regarding the water, Lake Oroville, it's still increasing, but for the last three hours, it has held steady at 886.78 feet, but it's rising. Okay. Well, <laughs> it's really overwhelming. I do want to link below to this video. Uh, California, you've been hit with volcanic earthquakes and Nevada. So please, you guys, subscribe to Dutch Sense, who does our earthquake forecasting very important considering the use of the extremely low frequencies that are being set off all over or all over but does it surprise me that we had earthquakes in Nevada no it doesn't now I believe that Dutch since uh, he talks of the fracking that is taking place I'm not saying it's not fracking I am saying that we also have to include the use of these frequencies. So, you know, it's hard to determine what the cause is. What we do know is we are at war. And they are using weather as a weapon. They are using these frequencies as a weapon. Fracking has an awful lot to do with what they are doing. I can't stand how we are destroying destroying earth, destroying life, and it, it, we can't get it stopped when we still have so many people in the matrix and they're supporting people like Trump. Yay, 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 yay. Well, Carol, he has, he has um, gotten rid of so many regulations, so he kept his promise on that. Did you check out the regulations? Did you check them out? I have. These regulations that he's getting rid of leave us more vulnerable to a lot of pesticides. Oh, I've got to show you this. Hang on. Okay, just two weeks after the nine-year anniversary of the BP Deepwater Horizon disaster, the largest ocean oil spill in U.S. history, the Trump administration on Thursday moved to dismantle offshore drilling regulations aimed at preventing another catastrophic leak. You got to check into the details, the details, the devil is in the details. And yes, the Trump administration, they have sided with Bayer Monsanto. Glyphosate, it is safe. It's safe. So the EPA proposes reapproving glyphosate, ignoring cancer risks, but they're going to um, place minor restrictions to protect wildlife, but not you or your children. Relying heavily on confidential industry research, the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency has proposed to reapprove glyphosate, the active ingredient in Monsanto's Roundup. EPA's conclusion that it poses no risks to humans contradicts a 215, a 2015, sorry. World Health Organization analysis of the leading independent research that determined glyphosate is a probable carcinogen. American consumers have no reason to trust the EPA's deeply flawed assessment of glyphosate safety. You have no reason to trust the EPA at all, nor the FDA, nor Trump, nor the Trump administration, uh, nor the federal government, or state government, or local government. Americans get it. You are not being protected at all. Getting back to weather. So, the earthquakes, 
yeah, you got to pay attention to an awful lot that is taking place. Now, trial to determine if government liable for Harvey flooding. Good. Well, we've had lawsuits against the Army Corps of Engineers for years, decades <laughs> of flooding caused by the Ar Army Corps of Engineers. And this is about the Army Corps of Engineers, once again, the two dam releases by the Army Corps of Engineers that ended up flooding thousands of homes that did not need to be flooded. So, good. They're taking them to court. Let's see what happens with this. All right. Unbelievable what is taking place. Levy breaches? More. More levy breaches. Taking through a levy in a couple different spots. North St. Charles area this morning as businesses were sounding the alarm there. This follows two breaches along a levy this morning. Rocky Madden live in St. Charles County. Now with a look at the breach levies. Rocky? Dan, it is something else out here. Mother Nature, very powerful. First of all, I want you to know I'm standing on a levee that was being overtopped just minutes ago. Take a look. You can see the grass here. Now, look at the levee, what happened to it, a huge chunk of it. The water just pushed right through, broke this levee open, and now the water is like the rapids. It is something else here. We're not sure how safe it is where we are. Probably not the safest place we've ever been. Ben, we're concerned about more of it lopping off and falling into the water. We're going to pan to the right out there. Take a look way out there. That's another levee. That levee is being overtopped as we speak, but it's not given up the ghost yet. We're going to pan back to the left. You're going to see another portion of the levee. It was being overtopped, but it stopped. And take a look over there to the west construction going on nearby and you want to know how much water has drained out of this place we're going to pan left again i don't know if you can see the difference in the color of some dirt the top dirt's a little bit lighter than the bottom dirt we believe the water was up that high now nearby uh, is on wheel storage they have more than 600 rvs boats campers all sorts of equipment like that parked there and they're urging people get your stuff and get out they figure they have 48 hours to move out of there at this point from this morning they're saying if you're at work and you're seeing this right now many people are watching fox 2 this morning they're telling me we saw it on the news we came here to get our expensive rv you know some of these are worth hundreds of thousands of dollars they want to get them out and get into a hide and dry place but they say if you wait until this afternoon you should be all right and i said you know it's this are you are you sure this is going to happen and they are very sure that they are going to be flooded by the two different breaches. We've got the Sanford uh, breach, which I believe this is this one right here, Sanford Creek, because there's a sign nearby that says Sanford Creek. I'm not positive, but the, I asked an employee with the uh, county department here, St. Charles County, he wasn't sure which one it was. And then we have another levee also broken nearby. All this water flowing towards, for sure, that RV portion, that RV uh, parking spot but um, we don't know if any homes are in danger. You know, Newtown is out here. They've built a lot of homes recently. We'll be checking into that. Fire department says right now, no need for evacuations, that most of this is over by Truman Road. I'll tell you what, take one more look at this. I think we're gonna head in from here. I don't think this is the best place to be at this point, because- uh... All right, mother nature, mother nature. It's always mother nature. No, please, these people, you know, oh, oh my God, it's so frustrating to listen to these people who just don't even know what the hell they're talking about because they are ignorant. Where is that guy? Where is that guy? Well, wherever he is. They're ignorant, okay? Ignorant. Here is an ignorant American who is supposed to be informing you of the news. You are listening to ignorance. Americans, you got to just wake up and start doing some research to find out what is taking place. Levy breaches seem to be happening all over the place. How many levy breaches have we had so far? Uh, we had that levy breach in um, Davenport. We had levy breaches prior to that about a month ago when we had the flooding 
in uh, Nebraska and South Dakota, Iowa, once again, uh, repeated, repeated, repeated. So, yeah, it's really remarkable. Um, Midwest rivers recede, but flooding danger lingers. Welcome to Alton. So, listen to this. River crested Monday in downtown St. Louis and will do so later this week. Good news, right? But wait, they're bringing on more rain. More rain is expected to fall this week in the central United States, including three inches or more in parts of Iowa, Kansas, and Missouri. Where and how much rain falls will determine whether river levels spike again and how long the waterways will remain swollen. In tiny Allenville, Missouri, Phil Thompson was among the 100 or so residents who were prepared to move their belongings to higher ground if necessary. Uh, Thompson, who's 67 years old, uh, holding off for now but keeping a close eye on the skies. Well, if you're keeping a close eye on the skies, please, Phil, notice how different the skies are today. But he says, if we get big rains, we're in trouble. The bulging Mississippi tore through a levee in St. Charles County, St. Louis, forcing evacuations. Another levee broke in northern or northeastern Missouri's Pike County, and several small farm levees in Missouri were overtopped. All of this is causing an awful lot of stress for an awful lot of Americans that they have to at 67 years old have to be you know evacuating moving stuff uh, protecting all of their uh, you know belongings their property if they only knew that all of this was brought upon them deliberately intentionally would they would they join us in, look, <laughs> I, I don't like being at war and sitting around just watching all of the casualties that unfold every single day. Leaders of four states hit by flooding meet again with CORE. The leaders of several Midwest states hit recently by flooding along the Missouri River say they've received assurances from the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers that the states will have a seat at the table when it comes to river management decisions. Yay, governors! Do you get that the country that was, you know, designed here was a constitutional republic and you guys are uh, independent of that federal government. Yeah, the federal government has some powers, but they're limited. You actually have more power. I am so sick of Americans not understanding what this country is, what it's about. Governors just, you know, they submit to the federal government over and over and over again. Army Corps of Engineers, I've posted videos. They are absolutely implementing Agenda 2030. So, do you think the Army Corps of Engineers are going to do anything to rectify and not cause more flooding? No. This is deliberate. It's to get these people out of these rural areas. It is uh, to, well, get rid of all of the small farmers because we are living in a corporatocracy, a... Uh, it's fascism here in America. Fascism. Corporate merges with government. And that has been that has been ongoing for decades. Our government works for corporations. So corporations have taken over agriculture, our food supply, like Monsanto. Oh, isn't it wonderful? Genetically modified food that is sprayed with glyphosate. All right. What a mess we are in. What an unbelievable mess we are in. So, governor, governors here in these Midwest states 
uh, you know, <laughs> I, th this is what came to mind. Pull up your panties and exert the power that you have, please. The Army Corps of Engineers is destroying so much of this country. Listen to, listen to this. It's a Texas Twister near Tohoka. Viral Hog posted this. Um, actually, with 439 subscribers, hmm, seems odd, 30 views. This was posted, oh, I'm sorry, it, was, it might have just been posted. All right, I'm not going to play it. But if you listen to the conversation that is taking place in this car about this, what is this? What is this? Um, well, some are calling this a tornado. If you look at this, you will see man manufacturing, trying perhaps to manufacture a tornado. So this is storm chasing video. I will link below to everything. You can watch these. I can't play them because I'm sure to get a copyright strike. Amazing listening to these storm chasers who are looking at this and going, oh my God, it's amazing. It's like, you know, something that they've never seen before. Well, you would hope that these storm chasers might do a little bit of research in terms of what they are seeing because what we are seeing is nothing like we've seen before. So we've had, you know, a rash of tornadoes just within the last 24 hours. Again, I will say I have a playlist, weather modification, loads of evidence that man is causing all of this weather all of these weather disasters 15 hours ago hail the size of a golf ball Lincoln Nebraska Lincoln storm damage you know you go through it's really remarkable what is taking place but Argyle uh, Argyle you're looking at more flooding which should really piss you off. Bracing for possibly more, more potential flooding and water getting back into their homes. They are still drying out and cleaning up after last week's flooding. And new tonight, Aaron Jones reports from our guy. Right now, we are living on one side of our home. The other half of Savannah King's home is flooded. On Tuesday, unfortunately, we had a really, really large flash flood. And hit our neighborhood. Tuesday, we watched as water rushed down Valley View Court. The road buckled. Close to a dozen homes flooded in this neighborhood. Residents say every time it rains for more than 30 minutes, flooding occurs. But Tuesday was exceptionally bad. We know that the water is coming from um, the development behind us. Um, they're up on a hill, and we're at the bottom of the hill, so naturally. Okay, but you need to look into Texas Weather Modification Association. You need, Aaron, to look into what is going on in your state regarding the weather. They are producing rain for you. And your Texas Weather Modification Association director stated this in an interview. We can create rain for longer periods of time, covering larger areas with far more rain inches okay so knowing that and knowing that it's your texas weather modification association director who stated that it means you've got to look into it that maybe all of this flooding is not just because you've got uh, a development up and uh, the rain comes you didn't live this years ago you're living it now repeatedly people have to start recognizing differences in this country and try to figure out what the hell is going on all right florida 
Well, Sonica, it does appear it was a tree that brought down the power line. And if you look at the trunk where this tree split, there are what could be char marks from a lightning strike. Now, this is the tree that came down across the front lawn of this home, bringing down a power line. But let me show you what happened after that line came down. If you take a look at this black char mark, which stretches across the front lawn, that's where that power line burst into flames. This video shot by a neighbor shows a live power line after it came down and burst into flames on the front yard of a home on Edgewater Court. I'm coming home down this street and saw the fire and um, I called my roommate and she was unaware actually. Catherine Jones arrived home just after the line came down. Her roommate was inside with the blinds shut and had no idea the front lawn was on fire. There was a little bit of concern, but I figured we got, if the fire truck's right there, they're obviously probably not going to let it spread um, up into the house. Jones says firefighters stood by until crews from OUC arrived and cut the power, ultimately extinguishing the flames and preventing further damage. The live wire was brought down by a tree that appears to have been struck by lightning. There are char marks where the trunk snapped. Meantime, just two miles away, workers at the doghouse on Edgewater were cleaning up shattered glass after a gust of wind blew out their front door. The weather just started to get really bad all of a sudden, and the, it started to get really windy. So I was staring out of our front door, and out of the left-hand side, I just see the door fly off the hinges and break right in front of our shop, and uh, pretty unfortunate. Alex Cohen shot video of the strong winds at the height of the storm. It was just before the door shattered, and then he took this video right after. Holy So everything is happening like, oh, wow, it just came out of the blue. Now to the new storms that are forming this morning here at home that are set to bring severe weather to the middle of the country on the heels of that heavy rain and tornadoes in more than a dozen states. Ginger is here now with the latest. Good morning, Ginger. Morning, Michael. Morning, everybody. You know, more than uh, 260 severe storm reports just in the last two days, including this tornado in Wilson, Texas, right in the panhandle there. That was over an area you can see not populated. Unfortunately, the severe threat now through Wednesday and Thursday goes right into populated spots. At least 20 reported tornadoes ravaging the central plains. One caught close range spinning across the Texas panhandle, shrouded with dust and intense winds. In O'Donnell, Texas, side-by-side -side vortices. Multi-vortex right there in front of me. And later, one giant vortex. Big tornado. A brief tornado reported near Lincoln, Nebraska. Damaging winds clocked up to 105 miles per hour, ripping off the roof of a car wash, uprooting 100-year-old trees. Marble-sized hail and blinding rain in Kansas, cars fighting through the swamp streets, trapped on the roads. And on the East Coast, a possible tornado in Madeira Beach, Florida, caught on camera, ripping off the door of this screened-in porch and throwing it nearly 100 feet. The scattered debris just barely missing neighbors' cars and homes. I've been in Florida since 78 and lived out here on the water for 20 years. I've never seen it come that fast. Again, never seen it come that fast. So, we have more severe weather to come. Midwest states in particular. How much rain are they going to be producing for you? Well, I hope that they, I don't know, fail in their mission. Miami. About that, but if we could rewind it a couple of hours ago, a really different scene last night. This is at 17th okay. and Biscayne. It's really like a river why. of water here. In this video, there actually the reason why I'm, I'm I'm including this is because this kind of rain now is common. Okay, these downpours, and suddenly these streets are completely flooded right on up to uh, stores. This is not anything that we've ever seen before. We see it all the time now. Please ask why. Please, you see that heavy rain, the person taking this video obviously doing so safely inside. 
and take a look at your screen right now we have this photo from a cbs4 viewer this is one of our weather watchers alan gisson so this is shot looking northeast from downtown miami look at that lightning strike to the left of your screen and to the right is the frost museum of science that gives you a little perspective there so as you might imagine, as a result of all of these storms, plenty of people lost power last night. At one point, it got up to 15,000 FPL customers. But this morning, that number is dropping quickly, even in just the last hour. So the most recent numbers we've seen, Miami-Dade customers still without. You can watch the, the videos, the end. It was another severe weather day through the southern and central plains, and this kicks off a multi-day severe weather that we're going to be facing. Now, yesterday we had 20 reports of tornadoes through the plains, and we can expect more today and throughout this week. So here's a look at what we're facing as we go through Monday to Thursday. Likely impacts, winds, flooding, rain, hail, and yes, once again, tornadoes. So we're going to see some activity this morning. It becomes more widespread as we go through the evening and the overnight. So this is all the same places that we've been seeing this pattern of storms for the past couple of weeks. So western and central Texas, once again, you're going to be under the gun. More of the same on Tuesday. Now the threat is going to ramp up on Wednesday. So this could be a significant severe weather day all across the plains. This is something we're going to keep a close eye on. And then on Thursday, we are still looking at a similar threat. So this is going to be a very active week. Here's a look at the rain. All right. Um, hang on. America 2050. Go to the mega regions link and click on the map. For Texas, they want all of you out of this area. You are being moved into the Texas Triangle. If you don't believe me, read Agenda 2030. It is on the United Nations website. It is real. It is not a conspiracy theory. Check it out. They are creating regions, mega regions, smart cities, and they want everybody in these colored zones in the gray area they want you out. They are depopulating the planet. Oh my God, I said planet, so someone for sure is going to, in capital letters, call me out on, it's not a planet. Oh, what is it? No, it's not, it's not a globe. It's, all right, look, guys, stop it with all of that nonsense. I don't care if it's a globe or a plane, you know, flat, it's, what I care about is what is happening here in life on a daily basis. The Texas Triangle is where they want everyone living. That's it, the Texas Triangle. That's why you're getting hit over and over again. Look at this. All of these areas are being flooded out and destroyed. And it's happening repeatedly. They want you out of these areas. If you don't die, they want you moving into a mega region, either the Great Lakes or the Front Range or the uh, Arizona Sun Corridor or the Texas Triangle or the Piedmont Atlantic or the Gulf Coast. They just don't want you in these gray areas. It is true. It is happening. It's real. So you want to keep calling people a conspiracy theorist? You are only showing your complete ignorance and you become a danger to us all because there's too many of you. And well, when you deny, when you won't do the research to find out what really is happening here, you become the enemy. You allow all of this to happen. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's happening. And it's happening uh, pretty much in our face. It's very obvious that something is very wrong. And when we have so many people who just refuse to take a look at what is wrong, well, 
then we all get destroyed. Look at this tree that came down. A 123-foot tree comes crashing down. Aiken, South Carolina. Storm brings it down. Uh, comes right up. It's uprooted again. Small roots, but look at the fungal disease. Heavy rain and wind last night canceled a lot of plants. It also loosened soil, putting rotting trees at the risk for falling. Laura Puglisi spoke to an Aiken man who's home. Rotting trees. Ah, we got a little bit of truth from this one. Home had a close call with the Mother Nature, Laura. Well, we set a new daily rainfall record in Augusta yesterday with 2.4 inches of rain. Over in Aiken, not a record, but still pretty impressive, 1.67 inches of rain. All of that rain and wind can do some damage, especially to older trees, and an Aiken man learned that the hard way. Does some damage. John Hightower didn't know how quite to react when he looked out his window this morning. Got my attention quite quick. You see how short the roots are? You see how small the roots are because of the geoengineering, all of the toxic chemicals and the heavy metals, the nanoparticulates come right on down from where they're spraying it, goes into the soil, and it is destroying the root system of our trees. That's why they're toppling over. Quickly, and then I walked out here and said, okay. A tree that once towered over his home stretched far across his lawn. The tree is so massive it stretches from the end of the backyard all the way to the front of the backyard, but it just spared the house. And the wind was moving it back and forth a lot. A couple times all these trees were being bent. So if you can rock a tree this size, you know, you got some pretty good gusts. And then continued on storms through the night. Sunday morning, half of his backyard was covered in tree limbs and leaves. We were spared not getting the house hit, but it... And you were lucky. So, if you want to see more photos of the damage in Lincoln from the manufactured uh, so-called tornadoes, click on the link below. This is what we are living now, and this is what has, you know, these agendas have really ramped up, and you're fortunate if you actually live in a mega region. You're not fortunate in all of these gray areas because this is but these areas they are really targeting hard. They want people off the coast. Well, guess what? We're going to be hit with more hurricanes, manufactured by man, lots of flooding. It's it's on. It's on. Every single day we are living a war. This is not life. Uh, as we've known it. We are living war. They are using unconventional weapons. All links are below.